Absorption phase, uh, we release CO2 and measure how much gets released uh, with these sensors again. Uh, it's all controlled by these electronics here. Uh, there's an ESP32 processor and um, it will display um, various electronics. This is the, uh, the heating system here. Uh, it has a pair of uh, 24 volt power supplies. circuits to uh, switch the heaters uh, on and off at uh, uh, 1,000 hertz. And that's bad for these heavy cables here into where the sorbent is. Uh, and that's about it. So I'm just taking data, which eventually I will be able to um, compile and plot. So here's Here's the actual window that has it's taking uh, measurements on every six or ten seconds. So this is measurements from the CO2 sensors? And other things. And other things. So okay. um, there are labels on each one. It takes a while to get used to reading them, but I'm measuring um, the temperature in three different places uh, in the, with the thermocouples. Yeah. And then um, each CO2 sensor has three uh, bits of data it puts out the CO2 concentration, the relative humidity, and the temperature of the air that it's sensing. Okay. So primarily what we're looking for from this test, since it is an absorption test, is that the, con the CO2 concentration at this sensor should be higher than at this sensor. That's right. And it's been a long road to get here because uh, just to get these to give repeatable and believable results has taken yep. a while. Um, I had to add extra beefier um, uh, power, power supply lines to them because the sensor was not getting enough um, high enough voltage, which it required according to the data sheet. And it was giving us bad data or just refusing to answer. So now that I've added these, it's been happy all the time. Um, I also have to put some hoops 
to seal up the, all the holes in these uh, little boxes here, which Ling made, uh, so that the outside air isn't uh, leaking in and giving us the wrong answer. You can also read maybe, um, these are just some random things that are displayed. Um, the first two, uh, TH3 and TH5, are the temperature of the heating wires on the input side and the output side of the sorbent. So they're basically room temperature now because the heating system is off. And then the CO2, C C0 is at the input and C1 is at the output. Right now, we're getting more on the output, but uh, today, thankfully, it has mostly been more on the input. And I wonder, since we're standing here talking, whether maybe some some of the CO2 is leaking into here. Oh. So let's see what happens if I breathe into here. See if the first one, C0, changes. No, so far we're still pretty stable, around 500. There's a time constant. Oh, seriously, okay. So, here's a question. Why is C0 at about 500 and not closer to 420? Because we're indoors here and there are people in here and they're working hard and they're breathing and talking. Yep. Great. It's almost never at 400 or anything indoors. Yeah. All right, so now we're starting to see C0 jump up to about 550. And... C1 is maybe dropping down a bit, so, so they're, they're leveling out. Yeah, and I think C1, it hasn't been below C0 for a few minutes, and I think now that means we've reached um, breakthrough, they call it, where uh, the sorbent is saturated and it's absorbed all the CO2 that it can. Now I can look at here, I can also look at the humidity, um, H0, H1, and consistently the humidity on the outside, is, you know, after the sorbent has been a little bit lower than on the input side. So that means it's still collecting water, which is not good. It's, it's not supposed to collect water because um, the, all the little s slots in it that are supposed to be getting CO2 or get full of water and, and it stops working like the way right. we like it. Right. But, but that indicates that the sorbent isn't full. If, if not, we're still if we're still absorbing yeah, water, it's, it's, I think it, it's full for CO two. It still has room for a little more water. It likes water more. Fair. It's what we're using. Is this. Um, it's called a molecular sieve. Uh, the technical term is thirteen x zeolite. And we don't have much actual technical information about it other than that. <laughs> Can we open it up, see what's in the bottle, see what it looks like? It actually looks kind of like either brown rice or um, rabbit pellets. <laughs> it does. Cool.